Hello and welcome to Apostolic Paradigms with Obi Pax Harry. Um, what a joy uh, to be back here again with your family. Let's pray and open the day. Father, we just want to thank you for a time such as this. Thank you for gathering us as your family. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work in our world, in our time, and in a season. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for the opportunity to share your word. I want to thank you for everybody that has the sound of my voice. Spirit of the living God, you are our teacher. We ask, oh God, that you will make truth available to us, that you will bring truth to us at levels and dimensions and frequencies that we can not just hear, but that we are able to implement, that we are able to fulfill our purpose as stewards of God's manifold grace. So Lord, I ask, oh God, for divine enablement. I ask that you will enable me to share your word succinctly, clearly, oh God, that we hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Again, I welcome you to Apostolic Paradigms. I thank God for uh, a season such as this. Uh, I thank God for our world. Uh, we have so much to thank God for. We are living through strange times. Uh, we are experiencing things that we have never experienced. But in all of this, we, are, we have a responsibility uh, to remain stewards of God's manifold grace. Uh, we are called to uh, be a people that remain in alignment with his will, his purpose. We carry a commission, and this I keep saying all the time. It's important that we remind ourselves that we're not just, you know, um, accidents. We're not just, you know, uh, uh, dwellers. We're surgeoners. We are people that are, when I say we, I mean the ecclesia. I mean, I mean, I mean the ecclesia. I mean God's sons. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting time to be alive. It's 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 really it really is, and uh, you don't even need anyone to 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 prophesy to you. you. Don't need anyone to 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 tell you that you really are in the kingdom for such a time as this. I, I want to read um, the scripture. It is very important, critical that we sharpen our our ears, uh, and I mean our spiritual ears, that we. Are hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I love it when Jesus wrote letters to seven angels over seven churches in Asia and to six uh, he uh, put a complaint you know the strongholds that were uh, predominant in those territories he highlighted those strongholds and to uh, those who did not make themselves um what's the word now to those who did not make themselves victims of those strongholds to those who did not make themselves weakened who did not give access to those strongholds there was a promise and these are the overcomers i want to prophesy to you that you are an overcomer here's november 2020 the year's coming to an end you are still standing you are still breathing. You are still, you know, functioning. God's purpose is still his purpose for your life. You are an overcomer. I want you to be uh, uh, very, very attentive to what the Spirit of God is going to uh, teach us this day. Uh, it's very important that we work with the Holy Spirit. We partner with the Spirit of God to understand what we have to understand. We're in a a first year of a decade i don't even need to tell you that you know we're in a very very critical year it's a foundation laying year and when you think about it when you think about the year when you think about you know foundation of home, of houses building a building and in a construction site when you think about you know how uh messy that 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 stage of uh uh, found the foundation laying stages, you won't be surprised by uh, 2020. No matter what is happening, I want you to understand that God himself 
is in control still of his world no matter what is happening he's in charge i believe that the posture and the positioning of the of the believer of the ecclesia at this present moment is very important i believe that we need the currency of understanding we need to be poised and positioned to hear what the spirit of god is saying to the churches I believe with all of my heart that now more than ever is the finest hour for the church. Hence, God is getting us ready to be those who emerge out of the mess, to begin to bring messages that gets the world functioning the way it ought to function. And remember what he said to the children of Israel as they were proceeding to Canaan. He, he made them understand that the land, their promise, their, their inheritance, what they've been given has been occupied by seven nations mightier than them. Deuteronomy, 20, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 talks about this. It says, you know, seven nations mightier than them. But, he, you know, he said, you're not going to take them out at, at once, but it's going to be little by little. So God gave the strategy for possessing the land. God is giving you a strategy for possessing the promise of God that you carry. What you need to do at this present time is to be at heel, to be in sync, no matter what is happening with the Holy Spirit, so that you know your part, what you ought to be doing in the corporate plan of God for his ecclesia for his family so we're going to be reading i want to just read uh, one, uh his message to one of the churches or maybe two of the churches that it's important that we know that the spirit of god is speaking you know to you know the church at this hour so to the loveless church here's the message uh revelation chapter 2 to the angel of the church of ephesus write these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my namesake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, for else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So this is the promise to the loveless church, to the angel of Ephesus, to the saints of Ephesus. Here is the word of God. Let's go very quickly because in this text, you know, the Lord Jesus mentioned the Nicolaitans. So let's just go to another mention of the Nicolaitans. And we are reading in context of the power of identity. And we're going to tie it all together. And, um, and it's going to take us somewhere glorious. It's going to take us somewhere critically important for such a time as this as we come to the end of a year and the beginning of a new year hallelujah so here he's writing to the compromising church and this is revelation chapter 2 verse verse 12 i'm reading from and to the angel of the church in pegamos right these things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword i know your works and where you dwell where satan's throne is 
and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Uh, here, in the letter to the compromising church, the compromising saints of Pergamos, Jesus said they had the stronghold of the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which he hates. Now, to the loveless church, Jesus said, you know, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So there's um, two uh, different kinds of um, believers. And what's the doctrine of Nicolaitans? Nicolaitans comes from two um, Greek words, Nico, to overcome, Laetans, the laity. So here, you know, Jesus is saying to the, the saints in Ephesus, look, you know, he came to them. What is so interesting, and we're looking at this in context of uh, stolen glory, in context of power of identity, in context of a people with a profound assignment who are unstoppable. No matter what happens, no matter the chaos, no matter the disorder, no matter the crisis, these are a people who are unstoppable, who have been commissioned divinely to do a work. It is a continuous work. These are kingdom citizens. These are glory carriers. These are stewards of God's manifold grace. These are people who are unstoppable. They just need to understand who they are and know that they are unstoppable. The promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen, concerning these people that we are speaking about prophetically. So now we are going to uh, his message to two different kinds of, you know, ecclesia, two different kinds of, you know, uh, believers, two different categories of people. And we want to just compare these and to understand what the Lord is saying to us in now, because it is very important that we know that God speaks into context. Hence, you know, we talk about prophetic ministry, we talk about prophecy and its importance, the gift of prophecy, supernatural ability to perceive and articulate and transmit the mind of God. That the purpose of prophecy, the Bible tells us, primary purpose is for edification, is for exhortation, comfort to all men. But then the importance of prophecy is highlighted by Paul in his teaching to the saints in, F in, in Corinth, where he begins to tell them in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, it says, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may be you, you uh, that you may prophesy so here we are we're talking to you i'm speaking to you uh, as a believer as a son of god who has manifested God, we very strongly that this is a, a year that the sons of god have manifested who has manifested manifested as who very important critical that you understand the identity that you have manifested uh, unless you are healed in your identity unless you understand your identity unless you understand the affirmation of heaven you're never going to be able to fulfill your purpose this is what we're talking about here we are we're now examining two different kinds of beliefs and how you know the Lord can instruct two different kinds of believers and how your territory can affect even the work that God's called you to and how the things in your atmosphere and climate can affect you we're looking at ways in which you know society in which circumstances situations can seek to remold you in another way we're looking at the pressures that come out can come at you that can make you uh, someone 
who no longer uh, knows who they are. Someone who then becomes, you know, uh, a, a, a people pleaser. Somebody who then, you know, becomes misaligned because circumstances and situations around you have pushed you out of who you are. We're looking at ways where you can lose spiritual ground and natural ground. We're looking at ways where what you are, who you are, can be discredited, devalued. We're really looking at past wars that you have had to, you know, deal with, you know, so that you are able to move comfortably, you're able to move powerfully, you're able to move with authority into your future. Uh, and one of the things we're going to be doing, and I'll be, I'll be sharing more about that in the course of the broadcast, is that we're going to have uh, um, a community program. We're going to offer not just uh, more detailed uh, teaching in the entire uh, uh, um, series that I have been taking you through, uh, but also the deliverance aspect of it. Somebody is going to become so thankful that they have been part of this. 2021 is a year that you are going to be very grateful to God for. It is your year to show up. It's a year that is going to answer to everything that God has placed in you. It is your year to experience surpassing glory of God. So the time that you have spent to prepare yourself is going to be a time that will be multiplied for you. You have to understand that in the various ways that the enemy has tried to distort things around you, God is giving you double for trouble. God is giving you double for trouble. Hallelujah. Hence the power of identity. You need to understand who you are and whose you are. We're going to progress from this to also begin to look at issues of, you know, identity war because that's what where the world is at at this present time so back to revelation chapter 2 so we see in ephesus you know he, he speaks to the angel and in every one of those churches jesus came in a manifest he came as who he is he came in an identity so to ephesus, uh, ephesus for instance he came he came to the angel he manifested to the angel as he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand. And he begins to tell them who he is. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. I mean, I've got no problem with that. He said, look, I know you, 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 you have all this good in you. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. And have found them liars. You have even, you know, known the people who have spoken truth or not. You are part of the conversation. Whether, you know, prophecies have been true or not. He said, I know this. He says, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. You have been, you have stood, you've been fed steadfast. He said, but I have a problem though. But I have a problem. He knows you're not perfect, but you know, he, there are standards. You are the plumb line of God. You are the one who heaven uh, 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 has deposited so many attributes. You are the one carrying the assignment of God. You're the one carrying the mandate of God. You're the one that is called of God to to express uh, uh, God in such a way that the knowledge of the glory of God covers wherever you are as the waters cover the seas because the definition of identity is the distinct uh, character the distinctiveness of who you are and that is also a word that translates glory so you are a glory carrier the glory is what marks you identifies you and this is not something that can be bought in the stores. It is glory is the makeup, who you are, the image and likeness of God that you carry as one created by God. It's the God in you. It's the God nature that you carry. This is what God wants us to study. This is what we're expounding on. This is what we're teaching. This is what we're encouraging you to look at because you are in a foundation laying time. You're in a foundation laying year. You're in a foundation laying season. And it is very important 
foundation that that foundation is laid upon Jesus Christ there's no other foundation that can survive and the Bible tells you when the foundation is destroyed what are you gonna do how are you going to fulfill your purpose so this is very important you know a subject matter for us to pay attention to very important hallelujah so he begins to uh, tell them, he said, look, you know, there's an opportunity to turn around. There's an opportunity, you know, to reset. There's an opportunity to reformat things. There's an opportunity to recalibrate. There's an opportunity to, to evaluate. There's an opportunity to look at things and think, look, you know, I haven't quite done things as I should do, do them. There's an opportunity to look at your activities. There's an opportunity to look at what you, your vision, your goals. There's an opportunity to adjust. There's an opportunity to readjust. There's an opportunity to 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 rearrange things there's an opportunity to plan there's an opportunity to prepare to be the best you that can there can ever be so here jesus is saying look there's so many things you got right but there's just some things that you need to adjust there are just some things you need to tweak because you have a mandate i have called you and the call of god is without repentance i have a commission for you i need you to understand that there were ways in which you gave the enemy access and there were things that you did not understand and he was able to take advantage he was able to outwit you psalm 89 verse 22 says the enemy shall not outwit you nor the son of wickedness exact upon you so god is giving opportunity to look at the ways no matter how little the crack is that the enemy was able to outwit you that the enemy was able to then exact upon you for when he outwits then he's able to set his throne of iniquity he's able to set his of uh, his satanic authority structure and what do we mean by that we mean authority structure we mean influences we mean influences that are oppressive we mean forces that are oppressive operating around you creating hindrances whether it be mental whether it be bodily whether it be emotionally to you coming to terms with who you are and the fact that there is an assignment on your life and the fact that you carry an assignment and the fact that you are an a change agent and the fact that you are salt and you are light and the fact that you are a powerhouse and the fact that you are the house of prayer for all nations and the fact that you are an ambassador the fact that you are a priest the fact that you are a king so many attributes of God nature of God embodied in the you and you're saying well I don't qualify God is saying you need to understand the power of identity hallelujah so he begins to say look you repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lifestyle from you know it's place unless you repent he said look i will take that edge off if you're not gonna do anything with it so it's very important what we understand that this is a decade for the sons of god to manifest you know no one should be looking for a son of god where you are not in this decade no one should be asking where your god is not in this decade because you're gonna show up of john the baptist the bible says that he was in the wilderness he was in the wilderness being developed until the day of showing for uh, on the day of his showing to israel until the day of his manifestation to israel so that's in luke chapter 1 verse 80. so there is always a time of your showing up progressively in the course of vision in the course of living life in the course of fulfilling purpose there is always a season a tipping point season there's always a time of fullness and when that time comes what you need is the word of the lord what you need is the vision of the lord to then come into your new beginning with that word of god you begin to lay foundation for where you're going hallelujah so this is a year to hear that word of god so are you surprised then that the enemy seeks to uh, to crowd the place with a lot of distractions are you then surprised that the enemy seeks to swamp you are you surprised that the enemy is seeks to bring fear seeks to bring anxiety are you surprised then that the enemy desires to take over the media space so that he populates you know the atmosphere and climate with whatever his agenda is 
Are you then surprised that heaven is looking unto you, the Son of God, to emerge, to manifest, and to do what? Fulfill Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14, that you begin to fill your own space with the knowledge of the glory of God, with the knowledge of the glory of God, that you populate your space with truth, that you don't leave any gap, that you become a gap filler, but you cannot accomplish that unless you understand the power of identity that you have been given the authority that you don't have to wait for it that you have been given the authority that you are the one that romans 8 19 has been talking about you're the one that everyone's been waiting for kalika you everyone's been waiting the entire universe has been waiting for you created orders been waiting for you the animals have been waiting for you to show up according to Romans 8 19 uh, so that they understand what is happening is it is it a surprise right now that there is so much confusion everywhere because the NS expectation of the creation is waiting for you to show up waiting for you to speak waiting to hear your voice waiting to receive your perspective on the issues that are at hand right now in your territory in your family wherever you are your voice your voice your perspective the wisdom of god through you is being expected and when you speak from the place of authority of a son then they're gonna hear you and you're gonna get that attention that you deserve our attention does not come from social media our attention social media does not define you when my you know instagram account was deleted and you know over four thousand people just went in a in a, a flicker of a, a second you know i sat back and for days i looked at this and i realized that i'm not defined by social media i'm not defined by your by the likes and the comments i'm not defined by that and i found out because you know part of your destiny and your uh, uh work and your service as a child of god as a son of god as an ambassador as a steward of his manifold uh grace as a steward of his estate as a steward of the father's estate part of your work is to understand how to administrate what god's given you're not defined by social media you're not defined by the likes you're not defined by the comments you're not defined by how many followers as a matter of fact, all of that can be a distraction because then you're not able, like Jesus Christ in John 17, to make an account for who he has given you. So, you know, I am a, a, a strong believer uh, in, in the ecclesia dominating. And when I say dominating, I mean populating the, the social media space with the knowledge of the glory of God. But I want to say to you, son of God, I want to say to you that social media does not define you. Uh, and that is going to be very important that when you understand your vision, your identity, you, you then begin to build differently. Paul called himself a master builder. So what should have been a traumatic experience armed me with strategy to begin to uh, define, I'm sorry, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> you know, gave me the opportunity and armed me with strategy to begin to build differently. Remember the story of Gideon, that Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine press. Why? Because of the Midianite, you know, assault. It was in that time, Judges chapter 6, that whenever Israel built at the time of harvest, this is God's wisdom hidden in mystery. And you need to hear this. When it came to the time of harvest, the Midianites will come and ravage the land and ravage the harvest and leave the Israelites hungry. And so they were on that, this, you know, discipline, I want to call it discipline, but just ju judgment of God because they were apostate. And so the Midianites would come. And what does that look like for you and I in, in, this, in this present context? What it is, is you have built in a way, you know, that you have known. You have done things in the way that 
you know, uh, in ways that are natural to you. You have you have built in the ways that are customary in the in the in the in the territory where you're functioning. It may even be in your own family. You have done things in the in the way that you know has been expected of you. You have not had a vision of God's family. You have been in, just in confined to the vision of your biological family. So you have been building, you have been living your life, you have been transacting, although a kingdom citizen, although your passport should be kingdom, but you have been living your life in the normalcy of what you know. And then there is a shift. And the shift becomes a traumatic experience that causes you to look at identity issues. Who defines me? Who am I? What am I? What am I uh, paying allegiance to? And you then begin to see sometimes, and when I say see, I'm, talking, I'm speaking Hebraically, perceive, understand that some of the things that you have been accustomed to are the biggest hindrances to your ability to move forward. So I realized that I, social media did not define me. Instagram did, does not define me, and I hope they're hearing me, does not define me. Facebook does not define me. And I began to, I received the strategy of God, like Samson, Killer massacre like Samson, and I began to be built differently. And I realized that without the, the strain or stress, I'm one of those who do my own uh, media, you know, without the strain or stress, I have been able to accomplish more without, you know, the posts as, as, as regular as they were. So I want you to understand that God will bring you, will allow situations to uh, happen around you that literally uh, shake the core of who you are, your identity, that cause you to recalibrate, that cause you to ask questions, that causes you to begin to look at who you are and how you have lived your life. And you're going to come out of those seemingly traumatic you know, situations, a person who knows who you are, who knows that you are not defined by circumstances around you. You're not defined by the things that, you know, um, you thought defined you and you ought not to be defined by those things and you begin to you know uh, do things in 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 different ways that achieve and accomplish the results because God is committed to purpose the Lord said to me once so Obi, I am committed to purpose I am not committed to your ideas I am committed to my purpose so God is committed to his purpose he's committed to his purpose in your life and he's not committed to your ways of accomplishing the purpose so hear me again I'm a believer of you know the ecclesia saints you know establishing dominion and I'm not dominion being you know establishing accounts from where they can express the word of God they can bring the wisdom of God they can you know uh, fulfill the the demand of the of the of the Great Commission so we're not there you know just to um, you know create uh, a false sense of of, of identity false uh, sense of importance or to seek fame or to be overcome by the things that you know we should have overcome remember Jesus you know wrote to two to um, saints in two different territories and in that he was you know highlighting the things that he he was not happy with and then those who overcame he was rewarded so <clears throat> That particular incident that would have been traumatic helped me to look at my identity. It helped me to examine issues of identity. But for how can you be teaching on the power of identity and you have not had the opportunity to be walked through it so that you also examine your identity? What am I saying? I'm saying that we have a commission you have a commission upon your life there are experiences that you will go through there are things that god will allow you to live out and in all of that as traumatic as they are they are just mirrors for you to examine your life so that you can come into a profound future which has been guaranteed by god because everything of god for the ecclesia for his children 
are progressive. God's plans are redemptive. They are redemptive. So it's very important that you take your place in social media spaces and every other space, workspace and all of that, but as salt and as light, as as change agents, as reformers, you have to understand the identity with which you come into dominance. You have to understand the identity with which you can gain territorial influence. You have to understand that you are a person on assignment, divine assignment, and is an assignment that's been already guaranteed to be successful. So it is very important. Maybe when we have the master class and you come on, you I mean, God has given me a commission and an anointing to prepare a certain people for yet. 2021 that is the year that the sons of God are going to be reckoned with like never before this is the word of the Lord so he spoke to them he said repent or if you're not going to be who I've called you to be then I'm going to take that influence from you if the if the purpose for you know you being on social media for instance on the cyberspace for instance is reasons other than what it's about i will take that influence and i'm going to place it on another right so if you think about that and you you think about the story of uh, uh, mordecai and haman which i read last week we we looked at last week in our last broadcast in our last teaching you saw that there was you know um a gap created but in this time it was against haman so he knew exactly what he had stolen, what he intended to steal from the man of God. So when asked, he began to speak what he intended to take off the man's identity. Hold on to that thought as we go back to Revelation chapter 2. So God says, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the... God says, look, whoever overcomes, I'm going to give you, you know, opportunity to eat from the tree of life. You're going to become a person like Simon Peter, you know, who's built by revelation. You're never going to lack revelation. You will not lack insight. You will not lack understanding because your identity is rooted in Christ anyway. So you're not going to be someone that the enemy will outwit. You're not going to be someone that a contrary winds will blow off course. When I say blow off course, blow you off course vision. Blow you off course mission. Blow you off course your goals. Blow you off of course your dreams blow you of course your aspirations that godly aspirations blow you of course that the hope that you have carried you're not gonna be someone who you know my my old pastor in Solihull used to call them old Grand Duke of York Christian and when you were up you were up and when you were down you were down you're not gonna be that kind of person because you understand you know that you know that your identity is rooted in Christ you know that you know as Galatians tells us you know that you know you are an heir you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ you know that you know that you have an inheritance you know that you know that the earth is the Lord's and all of his fullness you know that you know that the people even the people that do it they're in you know that you know that the resources wherever you are are primarily for you to manage to to co-administrate with the Holy Spirit to be able to bring that place to in a, a, a dimension of glory that it looks like heaven on earth you know that you're a person that is on assignment so he spoke to them but here's what i want to point out in context of identity he began to say to them so jesus said i hate the doctrine of nicolaitans what does that mean deeds of the nicolaitans he says i don't like hierarchy i don't like anything that makes one man believe that he is superior to the other. I don't want you to be part of that stronghold. I don't want you. Since the world is, you know, has become such a wicked space. It's become such a space where, you know, there is competition, there is rivalries, you know, there is a battle for supremacy, there is power battle everywhere, on global level, on national level, on regional levels, 
on village levels, family levels. There is so much going on. I said, look, you can't afford to be part of that. He says, you have to be an overcomer. Kaliata, you have to be an overcomer. You cannot be part of the battle of the flesh because I have made you to be one who brings healing wherever you are. You have a mission. I have given you the culture mandate. I have spoken in that mandate that you are to go make disciples of the nations, even make nations look like heaven, even make individuals look like heaven. You carry the regenerating power of God. You carry his redemptive plan. You carry his rejuvenating anointing. Wherever you are, there should not be devastation because you carry the promise to fill the earth and replenish it. Fill it with knowledge, redemptive knowledge. Fill it with redemptive understanding. Fill it with redemptive speech. And I'll back you up. He says, but if you don't, if you're dominant, if you're part of the canal, fleshly discussions and arguments, so I'm going to take that influence from you. I'm going to take that thing that makes you a voice makes you someone that people are going to listen to. He says, so you repent. So this is a place to look at our lives and say, look, you know, where I have, I have, you know, become a mere man. I love it when, you know, our apostle, Paul the apostle was saying to the saints, he says, because you've been part of jealousies, rivalries, and all this stuff going on, you become my man. And because you became my man, I couldn't even bring you deep revelation that will bring you out of ignorance, that will give you strategies to become who God created you to be. So because you become my man, then you are, you know, stuck, literally. You are stuck, literally. So what are we saying here? That, you know, here's one type of ecclesia, the loveless church. Jesus was speaking to the loveless church. He said, look, you have left that thing that has, that, you know, gave you the edge over the enemy. You go back to that. Go back to that. Understand your identity. You know, understand who you are in me. Understand that you carry the inheritance of Christ in you. Break away from that, you know, which has held you back emotionally. Be it from your family line, be it on a regional basis, be it on a national basis. Break away from that culture. Break away from that custom. Break away from that way of doing things. Break away from the normal. Break away from the, 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 the regular. Break away from what you've been used to. Break away from the arguments. Break away from the rivalries. Come up higher. Trust in me with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your path because right now, that's what you need. So this is the power of identity. So we look, went to the uh, the compromising church. They said, come out of compromise. So come out of compromise. So this is ecclesia going, growing in a territory. Look at how the territory was. Look at how the place, you know, looked where this church was planted and Jesus came. Remember I said he, he went to every church in a manifest. He went in, in every church in his personality, in his identity, which is very important. Who are you? Wherever you show up, people should know who you are. Wherever you show up, people should understand who you are. Wherever you show up, people should know what to expect of you. If you do not live your life this way, then you're going to give access to the antichrist spirits that devalue. You know, you're going to give access, not just access, you're going to give dominance because the enemy is always going to want to take advantage of any lapse. He is in his in his nature as the thief, as a murderer, and as a liar. That is his identity. He's not going to change. He's already defeated for that's what you need to know. So when he comes to steal, to kill, to do, you need to understand that Jesus through you has come to give life and life more abundantly. So you are a life giver. You are a life giver. Wherever you are, life has to come in Jesus name. So he began to speak to them, you know, the angel over the church. I'm going to be tying this up in a beautiful way to empower you. And please you watch out for, you know, our information about the uh, active masterclass and deliverance. It's going to just be profound. I have a mandate to get some, get some people ready, not everybody, but some people. And I hope that's you ready for year 2021. You're going to be armed with that kingdom, you know, passport, and you're going to function from a kingdom mindset that you're going to be one of those that God says, look, I have found a son and I can give the son the key to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever they bind on earth, 
I'll bind in heaven. Whatever they lose on earth, I'll lose in heaven because I can trust the sun to build me nations. I can trust the sun with the next level. If that is you, just begin to decree hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you be sure, please, to press on your share button. Press on your share button so that you can get others, other believers hearing this, that there is a shift. You are in a time of tidying up. This is a time of rounding up the year. And you have to understand that victory has been given to us. So here Jesus is beginning to compromise us. It's beginning to uh, a church planted in an atmosphere of com compromise. And he came in a manifest. And I love it. He came as a two sharp as, as the sharp two-edged sword. He came as the word. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So how do you overcome, you know, identity, you know, um, stealing uh, 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 spirits, principalities, whatever you may call them? How do you uh, overcome antichrist spirits that seek to devalue? I mean, that's what's happening in our world. The devil is seeking to devalue nations. The devil is seeking to devalue Kirakata, Masikata, corporations. The devil is seeking to devalue God's children. He's seeking to devalue you so that, you know, you seem to be worthless. To take your value is to take the glory of God that has been appointed to your life because value is a, a an English word that translates glory. It translates glory. It translates glory. It, it, it the, the value that you carry, it's tied to kabod, really, the word kabod. The, the, the weightiness of God upon you, the devil wants to have it devalued. He wants to have it reduced. And Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 tells you that his agenda is already out there. He says the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. The w Greek word for mystery, mysterium, means something that was previously hidden but now revealed. Something that was previously hidden now revealed. So it, God expects you and expects me to understand the ways that the enemy is seeking to devalue things. So God gives you a work. God gives you a revelation. God gives you a, a ministry. God gives you a sound. God gives you a business. And then there's about 30 people doing exactly the same thing. And they say, the spirit of God is one. Now, nah. God says the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Yes, the spirit of God is one, but the spirit of God it works with who you are the distinctiveness of God you are to express and the next person expresses so that you can interlock the wisdom of God you're able to collaborate you're able to work synergistically so what are we talking about when you understand the power of your identity then you become a person of value to the person next to you so you're not a scatterer remember Jesus said on less the strong man is bound, you can't get his goods. And he began, he began to say that he who gathers, you know, uh, with him, uh, he who scatters. Yes, yes, yes. He begins to say that he who, do, I'm so sorry. He begin, began to say that he who does not gather with him, you know, scatters abroad. So we are expected to be gatherers. And how do we gather? You know, we understand, we come in the healed identity, understand who we are. And we're on, on, on our lane. We are receiving from God, you know, uh, innovative ideas and we're receiving from God creative ideas that we can implement on the earth and cause the earth to look like heaven and your neighbor is doing exactly the same and then you two converge you know and you two uh, uh, collaborate and you two begin to work synergistically and then there is a thousand falling to one side ten thousand so you know you can imagine in that place of, 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 of convergence then you create more spiritual energy you create more you know and a spiritual authority and power in a region to be able to change it so here jesus is talking to two ecclesia in in regions who could not really, you know, take over the region, he came in a manifest, you know, to Ephesus, look, you've left your first love. Now he's talking to the compromising church in Pegamos. Say, look, I have a problem with you, you know, but within those territories, there are people called overcomers. And I pray that that is you. I declare that that is you. The overcomer is the person who's going to stand in the will of God. The overcomer is a person who's going to stand in the righteousness of God no matter what. The overcomer 
overcomer is the one that's going to be single-minded and hold on to God. The overcomer is the one that is going to wait and receive the vision of God and carry it out. The overcomer is the one that's not going to be a, co a copycat. The overcomer is the one that's not going to be a cloner because in each region, God has a unique work, a unique vision, a unique you know, uh, assignment, and he has people, he has given the uniqueness, distinctiveness. Listen, this is the definition, you're told here that the distinguishing character or personality of an individual is their identity. That you can't be ten people in one. No. So what are we talking about? So Jesus speaks to them, the church and the saints in Pegamos. He begins to tell them he came as the word. So the word is very important in a place like Pegamos. So I'm going to break this down in three minutes. So in Pegamos, I he said, he told them, he said, I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. So Pegamos is a place like Satan's throne is there. Is that, does that look like your country? Does that look like your town, your city? Does it look like your family? It says, you, where Satan's throne is. He says, you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, you hold fast to my name. You know how to call my name, Jesus, Lord, Lord, you know that. You know how to hold fast to that. He said, my faithful matter who came. He said, you even know how to dwell in this in this in this atmosphere you know where many have been martyred where many have been killed you see that but yet you are a compromiser he said but i have a few things against you he says you know you hold on to the doctrine of balaam what's that he said you hold on to the doctrine of balaam divination you hold on to you know divine us you don't want to know who i am that's why he came as the word so that the word becomes your focus so that you know how to build the word so you know through the word what your identity is it is so you know who you are through the word of God through the framing of the word and not through the framing of prophecy we're living in an era where men ecclesia believers have exalted prophecy above the word of God have exalted word of men above the word of God but God is calling us to come back to that place where we exalt the word of God above prophecy where we exalt the word of God above the word of men because no scripture of prophecy is of private interpretation we have to understand that that whenever we come out of boundaries out of context we are gonna get into trouble so he began to say to the yeah you, you know you 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 love you love Balaam you love divination you don't want to you don't want the word of God you want to hear you want to you have itchy ears you want to hear what is being said you don't want to sit at the feet of the of Jesus you don't want the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of you to teach you you don't even believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit you don't understand that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is inside of you. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 tells you, only the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And this Holy Spirit that knows the mind of God, the Bible tells you that you have not received the Spirit of the age. And you are on, on media. You are sending the, the WhatsApp forward. You are populating the place with negativity. You are an evangelist of the devil. You are populating the atmosphere with falsehood. You are not facts checking. You are just sending stuff all over the place. You are you are spreading fear. You are spreading pandemonium. You are spreading anxiety. You are spreading gossip. You are spreading lies. You are being used by the enemy to devalue others. You are being used by the enemy to devalue fellow ecclesia. You don't understand that the enemy is seeking to divide the army of God. He's seeking to divide them. You know, be, around the issues. Of of color of gender of that he seeks to create war his ultimate aim is to kill so jesus and have this problem with you 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 encourage that and the next thing he says you know you also hold the doctrine of nicolaitans he said you like to dominate people he says that's not the that's not the shape of the kingdom he says no the shape of the kingdom is jesus christ the chief cornerstone and the uh, doctrine of the apostle and prophet and those that you're building up so really the structure of the the kingdom is a flip of that of the of Babylon Babylonian you know uh, structure you have the CEO you have everybody you create dominance and then you sit on other. Jesus said I don't like that he said I don't like that he says I do not like you know uh, the, the, the the creation of hierarchy using you know the the, the, the things of God to create hierarchy, to come over, to overcome my people, that they cannot uh, uh, use their minds, that they've lost their identity. They don't even know their way to me anymore. They know the way to man, but they don't know the way to me. 
What am I saying to you? The time to return to God has come. The time to get in the posture of be still and know that I am God is here. The time to trust the Lord with all your heart, not leaning on your understanding has come. That in all your ways, not some of your ways, that you acknowledge him. So you know that he's God. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. It says, he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Jesus said, again, you have to repent. He says, you have to repent. You know, he says, I will come quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. It's all about the sword. The sword, you know, the two sharp edge sword, you know, sword of my mouth judgment. He says, you have to adjust. You have to know your identity. You have to know your assignment. You have to know what you're called for. You have to not exceed the boundary of what I've called you. Because when you do that, then you expose yourself to the elements. And what are the elements? The spirits that seek to devalue. The antichrist spirit. The devil doesn't have the plan, you know, for the earth. He doesn't have the agenda of God. He is not in charge of the end times. He is not in charge of what is going to happen from nation to nation. He's not told. God is. He always was. Will always be. Through you, he still is. And the Lord is saying to you, you have to discover the power of who you are. The power that is within you. So here's two different kinds of ecclesia that Jesus was speaking to. The loveless church and the compromising church. And in there, he pointed out the things that he did not like. Remember, in each, he came in a distinctive. And I love the way Jesus teaches practical, you know, relatable, because he intends us to use the teaching to achieve results. So to Ephesus, he went to Ephesus, look, as the seven you know, he went into Ephesus as the seven golden lamb stand. As no, he yeah, he as one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lamb stands. He went as the light of the world. And to uh, Pegamos, the compromising church, he went as the two edged sword, and he complained to Ephesus he said look you don't like you know the, the doctrine of Nicolaitans and I, I, I really appreciate you for that you're not a people that are you know seek to uh, you know create superiority and supremacy you know divisions and biases you're not those kind of people and I appreciate that to uh, Pegamos he says that's something I don't like about you he said look but to those who overcome you see in Pergamos, say, I will give you a stone, a white stone. No names ever be written. I will give you a new identity that known to you. I'll give you the identity to operate in 2021. Is somebody ready, you know, to receive that identity, to operate in 2021? The Bible says, if a man's ways pleases the Lord, he will cause even your enemies to live at peace with you. We are in a fantastic, you know, era. We're in a fantastic time for the rising of the glorious church of God. It's a bride without blemish. It's a bride without wrinkle. There is nothing to fear. The only fear to fear is the fear of the Lord and the fear of you not believing in yourself. I want to bring to you... Um, a proposition come up to the posture proverbs 3 5 posture the posture that king solomon the wise called um, uh, uh, elicits to us trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledging and it will direct your path i want you to understand that there is no other you you're the very best you there could ever be don't devalue yourself. Don't take the cheap option. God is seeking for sons to manifest. He's seeking for people who are going to go forth, you know, for him. 
so i want to thank you for your time i want to just pray with you come into agreement with you father i want to thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice that father by this word of god let there be a commissioning in the name of jesus i command the spaces where they are planted to make room for them in the name of jesus to receive you in your identity in jesus mighty name i command uh, every confusion every trauma every trap shock every experience that you have had that caused you to lose who you are to begin to question who you are to begin Begin to seek to be anyone but who you are. To begin to pursue the things of of life, affairs of life. Uh huh. Lebosi, I I decree and declare that this day that the balming Gilead, that the healing anointing of God, the healing oil of God, that the anointing oil, according to Isaiah ten twenty seven, breaks every stronghold, breaks every yoke over your life that has caused you to come into identity crisis, uh, questioning who you are questioning the ability of God that you carry, questioning his inheritance that you carry, questioning his capacity in you. I pray for you today that as you go into this new week, that you're going to be the best you that ever, that you're going to come into terms, even this night, that you're going to have a dream that will, will reveal to you who you are and whose you are. God bless you and see you again next Saturday. Remember, you're not defined by external things. The Lord in you, the Holy Spirit in you.